We started last week a new series called Highways or Highways. The outline is this, that there are common ways that we can travel in our lives. There are uh, ways that most people may travel, but there's another way that isn't always a highway or an obvious way, but it is a higher way, and it's God's way. God has a wisdom that goes beyond our common sense and our common understanding. And we are looking through the book of Ephesians to look at some of the higher ways that God has for us. Last week, we looked at the higher way of the blessings that he speaks over our lives. And this week, just as a wonderful um, example that we've seen, a great picture that we've seen this morning in baptism, we're going to look at the higher way of grace within our lives. And if you have a Bible, please turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to start from verse 1 of Ephesians chapter 2. And it says this in verse 1. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he may show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. There's a a, a device that we have in modern society that um, is quite familiar to, to many of us. It's a cash point. And I remember a few years ago, I visited a cash point at a, at a supermarket near where we were living. And there, it was quite late at night, probably about nine o'clock at night. And there was a big queue of people lining up at this cash point. It just seemed a little bit peculiar. Why were there so many people lined up? And there was a reason. Because someone had discovered that this cash point, when you requested 10 pound, was giving you hundreds. And thanks to social media, there were people coming from all over the area to ask for 10 pounds and get a lot more in response. After a while, I I went to another cash point, by the way, just in case you're wondering. After a while, It wasn't just the residents who found out about this, but the police found out about this, and they turned up and they closed off the cash point. And there were people who had been withdrawing their cash, withdrawing someone else's cash, and thinking that it was money for nothing. But the banks don't miss a trick, do they? And they were able to work out exactly what people had taken. And there was a time of reckoning. There was a time where the banks wanted their money back. This wasn't free money. This was money that was owned by someone else and needed to be returned. Don't know what happened to those people who'd spent it and no longer had it. But in life, there's like an eternal cash point. And the things that we do in this world, they withdraw from that cash point. They take out. And the Bible puts it like this, that over a period of time, we rack up a debt. We rack up a debt that grows so large that it becomes more of a trap. Now, this is not a finance talk, although if it fits, wear the cap. But this is a talk about the accumulation of our actions, our activities, our thoughts, our attitudes. That over time, we withdraw 
and we think we can get away with it. But the Bible says that there is a day of reckoning that comes for all of our lives. The Bible says this, that in days of inflation, that the wages of sin remains the same. The wages of sin is death. Now, I'm so glad that there's not a full stop at the end of that sentence in God's Word because the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but as we've seen this morning, the gift of God is eternal life. But you see, we live in a world that keeps withdrawing from its cash point. It keeps taking out. It keeps thinking that I can get away with this. And it keeps building up and building up and racking up and racking up a debt. And eventually, that debt grows so large that it comes to a place that you think, there's no way I can resolve this. How am I going to pay for this? And there are people along that journey, they give up and they just declare bankrupt and they think, I can't resolve this. And there are people who carry on through their own means thinking, I need to find a way to resolve this. And so they try to do some good works. They try to do some activities that they can go into the bank, onto the counter, and they can put it on the counter and say, that's towards my debt. But the Bible says that the debt that you and I have accumulated is so large, is so significant, that there is no way we can repay that which we owe. You can keep visiting that counter of the bank day after day and put your entire good works, your entire good attitudes, your entire good intentions and keep putting them against the debt of your account and it will still not clear it. The debt is too large. The trap is too significant. And what we've seen this morning is not a group of people who have yin and yang their lives to such a degree where they messed up but somehow they've managed to clear the debt and they've had a new start through their good works. That's not what we've seen this morning. What we have seen is a group of people that have recognized that when Jesus came and gave his life on the cross, that he did this. He said, it is paid in full. Your debt is no longer your debt. I have made the payment for you. And if you think you deserve that, if you think you earned that, then this morning you probably need to give your life to Jesus. Because what you think you've paid it with is called religion. And religion is man's way of trying to earn God's favor and we can't earn it. The debt is too significant and too large. Jesus came to this earth and he said this. He said, you have to recognize that you are absolutely bankrupt and that there is nothing you can do to resolve your debt. When you do that, I will step in through my grace and my forgiveness and will declare that your debt is paid in full. See, being a Christian, it's not necessarily because you're a better person than someone else. It's because you're a forgiven person. It's because you've recognized the lowness of your life. You've recognized the gravity of your shortcomings and of your sins and of your failures. And you have recognized that you need a savior And that Savior, the only one in human history that has come to this earth, lived a sinless life, died a death, and then rose from the dead, His name is Jesus, and He is the Savior of the world. And He is your Savior. He comes to forgive us of our debt. Now we know just the abundance of the grace of God which pours over our lives day after day. And as we just read in Ephesians, Paul says, it is not about your good works. It's a good catch, wasn't it? Did anybody notice that? (laughs) 
For it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. It's a gift. It's a gift. I meet people and they say, I'm not good enough to receive the gift. You don't understand the concept of gift. Because if you were good enough, it wouldn't be called a gift. It would be called a salary. It's a gift. Gifts are given at the discretion of the giver. They don't get given because someone's earned it. This is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. If you think this morning that you've earned your Christianity, that you've earned God's favor, you misunderstand. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift that we receive or it's a gift that we reject. It's a gift. And we've been showered with all this gift that just keeps pouring over our lives. It's fascinating that so often we understand the moment someone gives their lives to Christ for the first time that it's a gift. And then maybe a couple of years into our Christian journey, if we mess up and fail, we suddenly feel too bad to God, for God. But it's a gift then, it's a gift now. Grace is a gift. And you know the wonderful thing about grace, because it's, not, because it's not come from us, because it's come from God, that there are times in our lives when people offend us, when they hurt us, when there's like debts that other people owe us because they've wronged us, they've damaged us, they've said something that has hurt deeply, or maybe they've not fulfilled a promise or maybe they've gone out of their way in extreme cases to actually injure you and to be against you. Maybe they've committed their life to be your enemy. And you feel like they owe you something. But the wonderful thing about the grace of God that pours over us is that those IOUs, just the way that we've received grace for our lives to come debt-free before God, we don't then dig down into our own um, self-discipline to say, I'm going to forgive those other people, but we draw upon the grace of God and we just hand it over. And he was forgiven of this massive debt. And then we read that he left that courtroom liberated, free, full of joy. That this noose that was around his neck was no longer there. And then he bumps into someone who owed him a little bit of money. And he goes and he grabs them by the scruff of the neck and says, you owe me. You owe me. Do you know he was right. That man did owe him. But what he failed to remember was that he had been given much forgiveness. But not just enough to forgive his wrongdoing or his accumulated debt, but the grace of God was so abundant upon his life that there was plenty to give away also. And some of the apostles in the book of Acts approached a man who was sitting at the gate, beautiful, in great need, in physical need, begging. Disciples said to him, silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And we read that he got up and he walked and I'm sure he ran, 
And I'm sure that there was a commotion in the community. And yet, the disciples recognized that they didn't have anything to give other than the gift that had been given them. I find in my life when people wrong me, when people hurt me, my instinct is to think, I don't know if I can find the resources in myself in order to respond in the appropriate and the right way. The good news is this. The grace of God has been lavished on your life and there's enough of it to go around. There's enough to give away. There's enough to face the offense in the same way the disciples did and to say, silver and gold, I don't have. Natural discipline to forgive, I don't have. But what I do have is an abundance of the grace of God that I'm going to give to you because I have received it freely. Freely you have received, therefore freely give. Receive and give. Receive and give. Receive and give. That's the heart of the gospel. We receive and we give. It's the very essence of our faith. We receive and we give. It's the very core of our participation in the work of the gospel in our lives. We receive and we give. And this morning, as we draw to a close here, I wonder this morning, are you in need of receiving the gift of God's grace? I'm going to give you an opportunity to invite God to give you his gift this morning. And don't say you don't deserve it. You're right. You are absolutely correct. But that's not the issue. The issue is, do you know that you are in need of a savior? Do you know that you are bankrupt spiritually? If you do, you can open your arms and say, I received your grace, O God. And then secondly, Are there people who have offended you? Are there people who have hurt you? Because the highway will say, take offense. The highway will say, you respond to them in the same way that they've responded to you. That's what the highway does. And the result of that is fractured relationships. It's guilt. It's broken lives. It's damaged communities. That's the fruit of that. But there's a higher way. And the higher way is recognizing the gift I have freely received is the gift that I give to you. And maybe this morning, some of you, this will take an incredible amount of courage. But you'll have to take that offense that hurt, that disappointment. And you're going to have to take the grace that God has abundantly poured onto you and gift wrap it. Put it in a package, in a box. Wrap it with paper, put a metaphorical bow on it. And just see yourself saying, I give them the gift of grace. And I recognize that actually I'm just passing on what I've been given. 